creating lines. The first thing that we'll do is select the snap mode snap to center. Next, from the geometry toolbar, you're going to select create a line from two points. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a line from the center of the upper right circle to the center of the upper left circle. And you'll note when you get the cursor close to the center, it automatically snaps and you complete the line. Next, let's go ahead and select the drop down menu for the lines and connect and select connected type line. And what we're going to do now is we're going to finish or create a line from the center of the upper left circle to the center of the lower left to the center of the lower right and then complete it by uh, clicking on the uh, center of the circle in the upper right. So let's go ahead and start. There's the center of the circle in the upper left to the lower left to the lower right and we finish it at the upper right and we can hit escape to complete the line. And you'll note that the snap modes help us to make sure that our lines end up exactly where they need to be. Next, let's go ahead and go back up to the geometry constructor toolbar and select drop down. And this time let's create a horizontal line. And we're going to make our horizontal line pass through the center of the large circle in the center of the part. And note that because I still have active the snap to center, as soon as I get close to that center of the large circle, it snaps and I click to complete it. Note I've got an infinite line that runs horizontally across the screen. Likewise, let's go ahead and select the geometry constructor toolbar again. And this time we're going to select the vertical type line constructor. And again, we'll get close to the center and we'll click to complete the line. Hit escape to end it, and you're finished with creating horizontal and vertical lines. Now we're going to create a line at an angle through a point. So what we want to do is go ahead and select point angle as the type of line from the Geometry Constructor Toolbar line drop down menu. And we're going to make this line pass directly through the center of the circle, uh, the large circle in the center of the part. Now note, in the lower left down here, you can specify the angle for that particular line. In this case here, by default, it's set for 45, but we're going to go ahead and set it for 50 degrees. So when we do that, the line automatically changes to the angle that we specify. And you can see that it no longer passes through the square corners of my, or through the, uh, through the corners of the part cleanly. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. And let's reset our line in box A, or the angle in, in box A down in the uh, lower left of the screen, and we'll reset that to 45. Simply get near the center of the box, and, or the center of the circle in the uh, center of the part, and you'll see that the, now our line is exactly 45 degrees passing through the center of the part. Now just like we've created a line at 45 degrees through the center of the part, we want to create a line going from the upper left corner through the lower through the lower right corner as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to select line at an angle through a point once again, and this time we're going to specify in box A in the lower left that our new angle is going to be 135 degrees, which is the exact opposite of 45. And now we have a line running through the upper left through the lower right of the part. And finally, the last type of line that we want to create is an offset line. And again, from the Geometry Constructor toolbar, we'll select the drop down, and this time we'll select offset. And now what we're going to do is in the lower left, it's going to ask us to specify what the offset is. And by default, it's set at 0.5. Well, let's go ahead and set that at 0.75. And now, I would like for you to select on the last line that we've created and simply click on it to select it. And now it's asking you to pick the side that you would like that line to offset. I'm going to move the cursor to the right and note that when I do that, I get an offset line that's created like so. Now let's do it again, but select to the left-hand side of, uh, of the line go passing through the center. And so I select it and then I move it to the left and I have a line that moves 
three quarters of an inch or falls three quarters of an inch to the left of our diagonal, diagonal line that we drew. And now we're going to create some circles. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to enable the snap to point, snap to end point, and snap to center point and intersection snap modes. So let's go ahead and, and enable snap to point, snap to end point, snap to center point, which we already have selected, and then snap to intersection. And we're going to create a circle this time, and this time let's click on the geometry constructor uh, circle and hit the drop down menu. And we're going to create a circle from three points to begin. And you'll note that I have three points already established in the upper left hand corner of my part. And this, this is a similar drawing as, uh, as you'll find in your, uh, in your book, but uh, not quite the same, but uh, very close. Nonetheless, it's asking you to select the first point. So we're going to select the first point on the right. And then we're going to select the second point and we're going to select the third point. You'll see that the circle starts to appear and then it's complete when I click on the third point. Very conven convenient for creating a circle that runs through three points. Now we're going to create a circle from center radius. So we'll go back to the geometry constructor toolbar, hit the drop down, and this time select center radius. And in the lower left hand corner of the screen, it's asking us for the radius of the part or the radius of the circle that we'd like to create. And for this example, let's go ahead and, and let's create a quarter inch hole or a quarter inch circle, quarter inch diameter. Therefore, half of a quarter of an inch is going to be an eighth of an inch or 0.125 is what we're going to specify for the radius. And let's go ahead and select or create that circle in the lower left hand corner of the part uh, where these two lines meet. And note that when I get close to that corner, the cursor highlights, I click to complete the circle. And that is creating a circle from center radius. Now we're going to create a circle tangent to two adjacent lines. So again, to the geometry constructor toolbar, select the circle drop down, and we'll select tangent two. And let's go ahead and create a circle tangent to this short vertical line. And the it's uh, the line that's uh, connected to it that runs horizontally. So I'm going to first select on the line uh, at the bottom here. And then I select at, on the line, the horizontal line at the top. And note that uh, my radius is still set for 0.125 by default. And now that line falls perfectly, or the circle falls perfectly tangent, or the lines fall perfectly tangent to the circle that we just created. So now I'm going to create a circle using the diameter geometry constructor. So back to the geometry constructor toolbar, select the drop down in the circle menu, and click on diameter. And what I want you to do next, for the purposes of this exercise, is select the snap to midpoint, snap to function. And now what I want to do is I want to create a circle that falls perfectly on the inside of this box. Now to do that, I'm going to select the midpoint of the left hand line or left hand vertical line of the small box in the middle of the part. And I'm going to scroll over or drag over and select the midpoint of the right hand vertical line and complete it. And you'll see that I've created a line that falls perfectly within the center of the box using the diameter geometry constructor. Next, we're going to create a fillet and a chamfer. So from the geometry constructor toolbar, you'll see the fillet menu. And we're going to select the drop down and just click on corner fillet. And now on the lower left, there's a dialog box that asks us to specify the radius of our fillet. And by default, it's set for a quarter of an inch or 0.250. Let's change that to 0.5. And again, radius is half the diameter of a circle. In this case here, the curvature of the fillet, if you were to complete it, the, uh, it, it would be a one inch diameter circle. Now, now that we've selected a half of an inch radius for our fillet, what we want to do is select the corner where, we, where we'd like our fillet to be, and you'll see that when we do that, a nice fillet automatically appears to show us what the fillet would look like when we complete it. 
And now, and it also shows you the center of the, uh, of the, uh, of the fillet with the small cross that you see. So now what we're going to do is just click to complete the fillet. Note that it automatically clips away or trims away what used to be the corner of the part. So now we have a nice fillet or rounded corner on our part. What we want to do now is create a chamfer. So let's go ahead and go back up to the geometry toolbar and select the drop down. And this time we'll pick chamfer. And a chamfer is a knife is, is, is also considered like a beveled edge. And we're going to chamfer this corner of our part right here. So let's go ahead and specify a chamfer. Right now it's telling us that the width of our chamfer is going to be a half of an inch and the height is also going to be a half of an inch. So let's leave that default measurement uh, or dimensions in the uh, width and height um, blocks in the lower left of the part here. And we'll just go ahead and, and get close to the area on the corner where we want our chamfer to be and we'll just and we'll just click. And you'll note that when you do that, you have a nice small chamfer here on the corner of the part. Let's say we want to make that a little bit bigger. Let's go ahead and change that to a uh, uh, um, point 0.1. Uh, width and 0.1 height. So we'll go ahead and change these dimensions to 0.1 for the width and 0.1 for the height. And we'll hit the lower corner of the, uh, of the square in the center of the part and you'll see that now I have a much bigger chamfer. Okay, let's talk dimensions. Now we have a uh, ge part geometry uh, that's drawn out on the uh, part area and we want to position or place some dimensions in the drawing area. So on the geometry toolbar, you'll note that you have the geometry for, or geometry constructor for dimensions. And there are various types of dimensions uh, to choose from, horizontal, vertical, linear, radius, and so forth. But what we want to do first is go ahead and select horizontal distance. And what I want to do is I want to draw or, or insert a dimension line to measure the horizontal distance for the width of uh, this, uh, this block feature that's on the inside of the part. And it could be a boss or it could be a pocket. We don't know that yet. But I just want to know how wide this part is uh, or this feature is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first click on the corner in the upper left and then I'm going to click again on the corner in the upper right. And now I simply move my cursor to where, or I can roll the cursor around, to where I'm comfortable putting this particular dimension. And generally, you want to make sure your dimensions are outside of the part area. And leave yourself enough room to be able to insert another dimension if you need to. And click to complete the dimension. And now you'll see that I've successfully laid out the dimension or the horizontal distance or width of this feature in the middle of the part. So, and the same way that you do the horizontal, you would also do the vertical. and so I'm going to click in the upper right and click in the lower right. And here's my vertical size or vertical dimension for that feature at 1.5. Now we've also got a circle here. We've got a, a, a radius here. Um, let's go ahead and, and, uh, and figure out what the dimension is for this circle. So go back up to the geometry constructor toolbar and let's Go ahead and typically you can lay that out as a diameter. So let's select diameter and it's asking us for the diameter or to pick the uh, the circle or the feature that we're looking for, the arc. And I'm going to select the circle at a place where I feel that my dimension would uh, be best positioned. And I just click once and I drag off to the left hand side of the part and you have a nice leader line with a D for diameter, 1.00 for one inch. Now, we've got a radius here, definitely, on this internal feature, and we want to know what that is. So let's select from the drop-down. We'll select radius, and I'll go ahead and select anywhere on the radius, and you'll see that now my radius is 0.5 for the internal feature that you see here in the middle of the part. Now, this next one's a little bit tricky. If I wanted to know what the angle was from the center of the circle in the lower left to the center of the radius, I might have to do a couple of things. But the first thing that I want to do to be able to determine what that angle is, is figure out which plane I'm going to measure the angle from. And for the purposes of this demonstration, let's say we're going to measure the angle from the 
lower surface of this uh, this block feature in the center of our part here. Okay, so from this lower horizontal line right here that you see. So what I want to do first is I want to draw a line from the center of the circle in the lower left to the center of the radius. And that's pretty simple to do. I'm just going to go ahead and select line from two points. And I'm going to click on the center of the circle in the lower left and click on the center of the radius. Okay, so now I have a line from this from center to center. And now I'm going to select the drop down menu for angle. And it's asking me to pick the first line. So what I'm going to do is pick any one of these lines, but I'll pick the, uh, the, the line that we just drew from center to center. And now it's asking me to pick the second line. And again, we're going to focus on this horizontal line at the uh, bottom of our part feature. And look what happens as I draw my angle out here, but you can see that the angle, in this case here, the obtuse angle is 120 degrees or 120.9 degrees. I click to complete the angle dimension. So this is just a brief demonstration of some of the functions uh, that the or the the uh, capabilities that the dimension menu or the dimension geometry constructor gives you in FeatureCam. So you can use it to create dimensions or to just to check dimensions of features that you've put into your part.